Good evening. I now call to order the meeting of the Board of Education of Baltimore County for Tuesday, April 14th, 2020. In accordance with the mandated direction of the State Superintendent, Baltimore County Public Schools and offices are currently closed to the public and non-essential personnel in order to maintain the health and safety of our students and staff. In accordance with the Board of Education's resolution approved at the March 10th, 2020 board meeting, in the event of a medical or health emergency related to COVID-19, the board chair in consultation with the vice chair and the superintendent may declare that a board meeting or a board committee meeting be held remotely in its entirety without the physical presence of board members subject to the establishment of a mechanism that would allow each board member the opportunity to fully participate in the meeting despite not being physically present. And that would allow the public to also remotely attend those portions of the meeting that are open pursuant to the Maryland Opens Meetings Act by being able to listen and or view those portions of the meeting. In order to efficiently conduct this meeting, all voting items this evening will be done by roll call vote. Board members will say their names before making and seconding a motion as applicable, as well as when requesting discussion on an agenda item. May I have a motion to go into closed session as permitted by the Open Meetings Act as found in the Annotated Code of Maryland, General Provisions Article 3-305, B1, B7, and B8. To one, discuss the appointment, employment, assignment, promotion, discipline, demotion, compensation, removal, resignation, or performance evaluation of appointees, employees, or officials over whom it has jurisdiction, or any other personal matter that affects one or more specific individuals. Seven, consult with counsel to obtain legal advice. And eight, to consult with staff, consultants, or other individuals about pending or potential litigation. Do I have a motion? So moved. So moved. Second. Thank you, Ms. Rowe, for making the motion, and thank you, Ms. Pastor, for second. Mrs. Gover, may I have a roll call vote, please? Ms. Kuhn? Yes. Ms. Pastor? Yes. Mr. Offerman? Yes. Mr. Rashid? Mr. Rashid? Ms. Hen? Yes. Ms. Causey? Yes. yes. Ms. Joe? Yes. yes. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Ms. Mack? Yes. Ms. Scott? Yes. Ms. Rao? Yes. Mr. Rashid? We may have dropped off the call. Okay, thank you. Good evening. This is Kathleen Causey, Chair of the Board of Education of Baltimore County. I now call to order the meeting for Tuesday, April 14, 2020. In accordance with the mandated direction of the State Superintendent, Baltimore County Public Schools and offices are currently closed to the public and non-essential personnel in order to maintain the health and safety of our students and staff. In accordance with the Board of Education's resolution approved at the March 10th, 2020 board meeting, in the event of a medical or health emergency related to COVID-19, the board chair in consultation with the vice chair and the superintendent may declare that a board meeting or a board committee meeting be held remotely in its entirety without the physical presence of board members subject to the establishment of a mechanism that would allow each board member the opportunity to fully participate in the meeting despite not being physically present. And that would allow the public to also remotely attend those portions of the meeting that are open pursuant to the Maryland Open Meetings Act 
by being able to listen and or view those portions of the meeting. As a result, tonight's Board of Education meeting is being held virtually and broadcasted through live stream on the BCPS website or on BCPS TV, which is Comcast Xfinity Channel 73 or Verizon Fios Channel 34. In order to efficiently conduct this meeting, all vo voting items this evening will be done by roll call vote. Board members will say their names before making and seconding the motion as applicable, as well as when requesting a discussion on an agenda item. Mrs. Gover, may I have a roll call? Mr. King? Yes. Ms. Pester? Yes. Mr. Offerman? Yes. Mr. Rashid? Yes. Ms. Hen? Yes. Ms. Causey? Yes. Ms. Jost? Yes. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Ms. Mack? Yes. Ms. Scott? Yes. Ms. Rowe? Yes. All are present. Thank you. Can you please, Mrs. Gover, do a roll call vote for the staff? Dr. Adams? Present. Ms. Burnout? Ms. Burnout? Dr. McComas? Present. Mr. Burke? Present. Ms. Byers? Present. Mr. Dickerson? Here. Dr. Jones? Present. Ms. Lowry? Present. Dr. Roberts? Here. Dr. Scrivett? Present. Dr. Wheatley Fool? Present. Dr. Garton? Good evening. Ms. Howie? Here. Mr. Mr. Corn? Here. Ms. Che? Here. Mr. Perra? Present. Mr. Dixit? Present. Mr. Tantlin? Mr. Tantlis? Mr. Patilla? Present. Is there any other staff Mr. members Tantlis, on the present. line that I have not uh, said their name? Uh, Andy, no spam, I'm here. Thank you, Andy, sorry. Uh, Mr. Tantlis is present. Thank you. Thank you. Earlier th Thank you. The first item on the agenda is consideration of the April 14th agenda. Dr. Williams, are there any additions or changes to tonight's agenda? There are no changes or additions to tonight's agenda. Hearing none, the agenda stands as presented. The next item on the agenda is the minutes of the closed session. Earlier this evening, the board met in closed session pursuant to the Open Meetings Act for the following reasons. To one, discuss the appointment, employment, assignment, promotion, discipline, demotion, compensation, removal, resignation, or performance evaluation of appointees, employees, or officials over whom it has jurisdiction, or any other personnel matter that affects one or more specific individuals, Seven, consult with counsel to obtain legal advice. And eight, to consult with staff, consultants, or other individuals about pending or potential litigation. The minutes of the closed session and informational summary can be found on our website at www.bcps.org slash board slash informational dash summaries dot html. The next item on our agenda is personnel matters, and for that we call on Ms. Lowry. To present. Good evening, Chairwoman Causey, Vice Chairwoman Hen, Superintendent Williams, and members of the board. I would like the board's consent for the following personnel matters. 
retirement, resignation, non-renewals, leave, certificated appointments. Do I have a motion to approve the personnel matters as presented in Exhibits D1 through D5? So moved, Lisa Mack. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second, past your. Any discussion? Mrs. Gover, may I have a roll call vote? Mr. Kuhn? Yes. Ms. Hester? Yes. Mr. Offerman? Yes. Mr. Rashid? Yes. Ms. Hem? Yes. Ms. Gauzy? Yes. Ms. Jost? Yes. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Ms. Mack? Yes. Scott? Yes. Ms. Rao? Yes. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is administrative appointments, and for that we call on Dr. Williams. Good evening, Madam Chair and members of the board. I would like to bring forward for your approval the following administrative appointment. Supervisor Compliance in the Office of Special Education. Do I have a motion to approve the administrative appointment as presented in Exhibit E1? So moved, Thank you, Ms. Pasteur. Do I have a second? Ms. Matt, so moved. Any discussion? Mrs. Gover, may I have a roll call vote? Mr. Kuhn? Yes. Ms. Pasteur? Yes. Mr. Offerman? Yes. Mr. Rashid? Yes. Ms. Hen? Yes. Ms. Fozzi? Yes. Ms. Joe? Yes. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Ms. Mack? Yes. Ms. Scott? Yes. Ms. Rowe? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. The motion carries. Dr. Williams? So our candidate is Charlene Harris as the Supervisor of Compliance in the Office of Special Education Compliance and Placement. Uh, she brings to us experience as a specialist in Baltimore County Public Schools uh, this year. And previously, she served in Frederick County Public Schools and Baltimore City Public Schools, as well as time in the New York State Education Department, the Western Regional Office. So congratulations uh, to Charlene Harris as the new Supervisor of Compliance in the Office of Special Education. Thank you, Dr. Williams. And while we do not have our normal applause, we do congratulate Ms. Harris and welcome her to her new position. The next item on the agenda is public comment. Because the board is meeting virtually for today's meeting, only written public comments can be accepted. Comments may be emailed to boe at bcps.org, and these comments will be distributed to the Board of Education members. The members of the board appreciate hearing from interested citizens. As appropriate, we will refer your concerns to the superintendent for any follow-up by his staff. The next item on the agenda is Dr. Williams' superintendent's report. So again, good evening, everyone. Uh, first and foremost, I want to address the COVID-19 crisis. Please know that our leaders and staff are doing everything we can to keep students and staff safe and to support our community. Uh, this is not business as usual. Most of our staff are working from home and many are working right alongside their children. Our families uh, are suffering job losses and uncertainty related to basic needs. And as COVID-19 continues to spread, it's becoming more likely that you know someone whose health has been affected, particularly among people of color. And that well-being of our families and staff is front of mind as we move forward. 
As you know, schools are closed from March 16th um, through April 24th as required by the state. We are following guidance from our governor and the Baltimore County Health Department to maintain social distancing. Schools and offices have been providing services remotely since March 30th. On April 6th, following a week of training opportunities for staff, we began our continuity of learning uh, plan. This is our way of providing new learning while schools are closed. Materials are available on our website and through Schoology, and teachers are reaching out to students online and by phone. We have run into some delays related to the governor's stay at home order, but as of yesterday, printed packets were mailed to students in pre-K through grade five. Middle and high school students can request a packet on our website or by calling their teacher or principal. We will provide an update on the Chromebooks uh, for grades three through five as soon as possible. There is no replacement for the dynamic interactions that can take place between students and teachers in our schools, but we are able to continue engaging with our students to support their academic and social-emotional needs. I know that our class of 2020 is disappointed that we will not be able to hold these cherished events like prom and other senior activities. This decision was not made lightly, but it was necessary based on our current safety guidelines. During this closure, we are relying on a electronic communication to keep families and staff members informed. If you are a parent or staff member, please listen to our phone calls, read our emails, and check our website for ongoing updates and resources. Our coronavirus updates webpage includes FAQs, as well as links to many state and county resources, including mental health supports. I just want to bring to your attention as I reported uh, about a week ago, um, <clears throat> our donations during this time, uh, where we provided uh, procedure surgical masks, 1,800 masks. We provided personal protective equipment or PPE kits, gowns, gloves, masks, approximately 400 individual kits, digital thermometers, roughly 73, and N95 respirators, approximately 100 plus masks for healthcare workers. Our school nurses have been involved in <clears throat> providing support to the Baltimore County Health Department, uh, their hotline, um, as, as well as they're working to create intake unit for all the new COVID-19 cases. Um, as you all know, our website provides a list of 50 sites that are distributing a grab and go bag containing breakfast, lunch, and dinner on weekdays from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m for students age 18 and younger. And since March 16th, our dedicated staff in the Office of Food and Nutrition Services have distributed more than 275,000 meals. And I know Ms. Pasteur will provide some updates regarding uh, food and meals. So I thank her for that leadership. I do wanna emphasize and thank our food and nutrition staff for the incredible work during this state of emergency and also to thank our building service workers, building operations supervisors, ground workers, bus drivers and attendants for their work to clean and sanitize all 175 schools, program centers, buses, and central offices. We do not know how long this crisis will last and there are still many questions to answer, but I assure you that we are all in this together and we will get through this together as one team. We understand the historic nature of the COVID-19 pandemic and the financial constraints it has placed on the county. County Executive Johnny Olcheski's budget message clearly reflects this reality. In Baltimore County Public Schools, we will receive what we received in the county's executive budget, and we will make decisions about how best to move forward with the funding we receive. We will continue to strive to have teacher positions for our enrollment growth and provide the necessary professional development for all of our teachers and leaders. And we will look at the best way to meet these important needs uh, in Team BCPS. So thank you, uh, County Executive Johnny Ocheski, for your budget presentation uh, this morning. And last, but certainly not least, it is my pleasure to recognize the results of our first system-wide student election for student member of the board, 
More than 8,000 middle and high school students voted online following coursework along the election process and the opportunity to view online speeches from the three finalists, submit questions, and view a Q&A. Our students selected Dundalk High School junior Joshua Muhamza to be the next student member of the board. Joshua's name has been forwarded to Governor Larry Hogan for the consideration and appointment to the one-year position, which will begin on Ju July 1st. Joshua is a member of the Dundalk's National Honor Society, Student Government Association, and Homeland Security Program. He has participated in his school's debate team, AVID program, soccer team, model uh, Congress, and model UN programs. He also serves as the Southwestern representative for the Baltimore County Student Councils and a member of his infrastructure committee. Outside of school, he tutors with his church, serves as a volunteer soccer coach at Dundalk Middle School, and is a senior patrol leader with the Boy Scouts of America. So congratulations, Joshua. We're looking forward to working with you. And again, kudos to our current student member of the board, Omar Rashid. Um, your leadership, your wisdom, and dedication have been a welcome addition to this board and to our school leadership. We wish you well as you navigate your many college acceptances. I'm sure you will share some during your report. So thank you all. That concludes my superintendent report. Thank you, Dr. Williams. The next item is my chair's report. And I too want to acknowledge, as Dr. Williams has indicated, that COVID-19 pandemic has changed so many aspects of our lives. This is necessary, however, when we as a community, state, country, and the world are striving to save lives and to preserve our communities in the long run. We do acknowledge the upheaval, isolation, concerns about health and welfare of family, friends, colleagues, community members, and we also miss visiting our schools our students, and the many special events in the school system. We know that there are other losses that are being felt by students, staff, families, and communities, especially our seniors. And we do want to say that we are going to highlight, find ways, as Dr. Williams has said, find ways to highlight and acknowledge the efforts and achievements of our seniors. While, the, uh, while we are all experiencing these feelings, I would say please stay connected to all of the resources that are available on our website, bcps.org. There are resources for students, there are resources for families, for uh, folks that are in need for food for students, all of that information is there. We also want to appreciate all those that are on the front lines of this effort all the healthcare workers, the first responders, uh, elected officials, and other volunteers, community members uh, that are working so diligently and compassionately, all the essential personnel, food and nutrition folks, and others. I also just want to uh, encourage students, staff, families, and seniors that we will get through this together. I do want to take a moment and acknowledge the contributions of former board member Roger C. Jansen. He was a former Board of Education of Baltimore County member who passed away on March 17th of 2020. He was 71 years old. He was appointed to the board in 2004 and was its vice president from 2006 to 2007. He served on the policy review committee from 2005 to 2011 was a member of the board's ethics committee from 2007 to 2008 and later served as a member of the buildings and contracts committee. He also served as a member of the audit committee beginning in 2004 and was chair of that committee in 2008. He was known for his conscientious deliberation of school board business, his leadership in committees, and always putting the interests of students first. Mr. Jansen also held positions with the Maryland Association of Boards of Education as a member of the Resolution Committee beginning in 2005 and as its chairman from 2007 to 2011, and as a member of the Nominating Committee as well. He joined MABE's board in 2007 and was president in 2012. Additionally, he served as Secretary Treasurer of the National School Boards Association by board since its inception in 2010. As evidenced by his actions and participation, 
Mr. Jansen was dedicated and committed to public education, and we are grateful for all of his contributions. I did also want to take a moment to congratulate and welcome student member of the board, Joshua Mahumzu, and our SMOB Omar is going to speak more about him. I also wanted to offer congratulations and welcome to Dr. Erin Hager. She was just appointed as the at-large board member by Governor Hogan, and she is connected to the school system in many ways, and we are very eagerly awaiting her participation. She is a BCPS graduate. She is also the parent of BCPS students. Dr. Hager holds faculty appointments in the University of Maryland School of Medicine, Departments of Pediatric and Epidemiology and Public Health, and she is the director of the University of Maryland School of Medicine program in health equity and population health. In her research, she implements and evaluates strategies to promote healthy eating and physical activity among children in schools and communities. Since 2018, she has served as the elected chair of the Maryland State School Health Council. Dr. Hager graduated from Lansdowne High School in 1996, earned a bachelor's degree from Loyola College, and a doctorate in human nutrition from the Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health. She currently lives in Catonsville with her husband and three children, and we look forward to her advocacy for children's health, which will enrich our discussions and our decision making. And finally, I just wanted to say a quote by Maya Angelou. but it is a decision made for our health and safety. Thank you for filling out the survey regarding graduations and the alternatives that we can have. Our superintendent and his team will review their information and provide it to them. I now want to congratulate our next student member of the board, Joshua Mahanzo. Joshua is currently a senior at Dundalk High School and serves as a member of his school's National Honor Society, SGA, AVID, and Homeland Security Program. He is also the BCSC Southeastern Representative and a member of the BCSC Infrastructure Committee. I have worked with Joshua and know he will represent all 115,000 plus students to the best of his ability. Joshua ran an amazing campaign and was elected to be the next SMA by our BCPS students. Congratulations, Joshua. I hope everyone continues to stay strong during this crisis. And remember, we are all in this together as a family, as Team BCPS. Thank you. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is item J, new business, action taken in closed session. And for that, we call on Mr. Nussbaum. Yes, good evening. Uh, earlier this evening, the board in the closed session considered three appeals regarding confidential employee and student matters in your quasi-judicial capacity. All three of these matters were heard on the record as no timely requests for oral arguments were made. At this time, it would be appropriate to confirm the actions taken in closed session in those matters and to authorize Ms. Gover to sign the orders on behalf of each of the board members. The three matters that were under consideration were Hearing Examiner 2019-20-07, Hearing Examiner number 20-35, and Hearing Examiner number 20-38. Thank you. Do I have a motion to approve the action taken in closed session? So moved, Lisa Mack. Do I have a second? Second, passed, Jewel. Any discussion? May I have a roll call vote, please? Mr. Kuhn? Yes. Ms. Pasture? Yes. 
Mr. Offerman? Yes. Mr. Rashid? Yes. Ms. Hen? Yes. Ms. Causey? Yes. Ms. Jost? Yes. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Ms. Max? Yes. Ms. Scott? Yes. Ms. Rob? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. The motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Newsbaum. The next item on the agenda is item K, new business, proposed board meeting schedule for 2020-2021. The proposed board meeting schedule has been provided to the board for review, and it is also attached to board docs for the public's review. May I have a motion to approve the proposed board meeting schedule for 2020-2021 as presented in Exhibit K? So moved, Lily Rowe. Is there second, a second? Lily. Second, Hen. Thank you. Is there any discussion? John, John Offerman, yes. Please go ahead, Mr. Offerman. Yes. Uh, I would uh, propose an amendment to, uh, to this that we would uh, add uh, a, uh, an additional two hours, an additional session up to two hours uh, on January 12th after inclusion of the public comments on the 2021-22 operating budget. Uh, I do this uh, with the fact that the fact that in the last two years, we've, we've used the, the, that, uh, that the, the, the time that was given to the uh, public comment was only used 38 minutes in 2019 and 47 minutes in, 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 uh, in 2020. And, and in addition, it seemed like in the last year, and particularly the last two years, but particularly the last year, uh, when we had to, when we were trying to uh, actually finalize the budget, that that we went way too long. Uh, we were, I believe, we were past 12 o'clock uh, in uh, in uh, 2020, and I know that we were close to that in uh, in uh, 2019. So I'm proposing that we that, that we add a uh, a, a session if, at, a session on the 12th, again, just as a as an additional budget workshop. Thank you. Is there a second to Mr. Offerman's amendment? Second. Ms. Hen? Yes. Thank you, Ms. Hen. Board members, is there any discussion? If so, just please state your name and start your discussion. This is Lisa Mack. The only thing I'd say is for each of those dates, which we have done in the past, we should have a snow date because you don't know about the weather. Do some of the work we have to do, you know, when we when we have the actual finalization of the budget on uh, on uh, on that note. Okay, thank you. This is Julie. John, were you thinking about an open meeting work session or yes. an administrative session, an open work session? Okay. Yes, and I'll think about an, an open work session. Thank you. Lily Rowe. It seems like on most of the budget meetings that go long, it's because we're getting everyone's motions heard. John, was it your intention that that additional work session would be one to entertain motions to the budget? Yes. Thank you. This is Mrs. Causey. John, I, I think that's a good idea, and I would support your motion. Other board members or Dr. Williams have any discussion? 
May I have a roll call vote on Mr. Offerman's amendment to add two hours of an open work session on the budget to the January 12th, 2021 operating pu budget public hearing? May I have Mr. a roll Kuhn? call vote, please? Mr. Kuhn? Yes. Ms. Hester? Yes. Mr. Offerman? Yes. Mr. Rashid? Yes. Ms. Hen? Yes. Ms. Causey? Yes. Ms. Jost? Yes. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Ms. Mack? Yes. Ms. Scott? Yes. Ms. Rowe? Yes. That motion, that motion carries to add the amendment. Is there any other discussion related to the board meeting calendar? Hearing none, may I have a roll call vote? So the motion is to vote on the uh, calendar as amended. Mr. Kuhn? Yes. Ms. Pasture? Yes. Mr. Offerman? Yes. Mr. Rashid? Yes. Ms. Hen? Yes. Ms. Causey? Yes. Ms. Jost? Yes. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Ms. Mack? Yes. Ms. Scott? Yes. Ms. Roth? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. The motion carries. The next item is item L, new business, the fiscal year 2020 budget appropriation transfer. And for that, we call on Mr. Tantliff to present. Thank you. This is Mr. Tantliff. Uh, good evening. In front of you, you'll find a budget appropriation transfer request. The BCPS budget consists of 13 separate appropriations by activities prescribed by MSDE. Transfer of funds between activities requires approval from the Board of Education and County Council. Based on close monitoring of expenditures through the first three quarters of FY 2020, our current year full year expense projections show an overall surplus, but with shortfalls in some activities and surpluses in others. Because BCPS carries no contingency budget, the only way to manage unanticipated expenses during the year is via amendments to the budget. We are projecting that overall, we will finish the year approximately $20 million under budget. Staff is closely evaluating the effects of COVID-19 school closings on the budget and have included some projected savings through the end of April in the BAT. Available funds of $1.7 million are coming from Activity 2 mid-level administration due to vacancy-related salary savings and reduced spending due to the April school closures. $7.2 million can be transferred from Activity 3, instructional salaries due to position vacancies. $500,000 come from Activity 7, student personnel services due to vacancies. $700,000 will be uh, transferred from Activity 8, health services also due to position vacancies. $1.5 million is coming from Activity 9, student transportation, which will allocate, reallocate savings from contract bus services, diesel fuel, and field trips due to school closures. 500,000 is coming from Activity 10, operation of plant due to vacancy-related salary savings, and six million is available to be transferred from Activity 12, fixed charges due to fringe benefits associated with vacancies. A transfer of $700,000 into Activity 1 administration will provide funds required for a new high-capacity document imaging system for human resources and finance, a requested transfer of $3.7 million into Activity 4, instructional textbooks and supplies will provide funds required for the purchase of critical FY 2021 textbooks, a transfer of $3.15 million into Activity 5, other instructional costs will provide funds required for principal's reallocation to support school budgets, school photocopies and printing, and out-of-county living arrangements. Funds of $6.6 million are requested transfer in Activity 6, special education, to provide funds required for non-public placement and parent reimbursements. 
And finally, funds of $3.95 million are requested for transfer into Activity 11 maintenance of plant to provide funds required for building service workers, uh, coronavirus school cle- cleaning related overtime uh, during the first two weeks of the closure of about $2 million, relocatable classrooms of about $1.5 million, and to, pre- to prepare for the start of next school year, and uh, half a million dollars for bottled water. We will now take any questions you may have. Thank you. Board members, since there is uh, potential interest in this, I will just go around the dais for this item. Mr. Kuhn? Thank you. So one of the questions I have has to do with the maintenance of plant. Um, the expectation is I'm just focusing right now on the relocatable classrooms. Is that for purchasing more trailers? And if so, how many trailers are we purchasing for that, that amount? Um, that will purchase about – we'll purchase 15 – um, trailers that were above plan to get ready for next school year. We don't call them trailers, though, but relocatable classrooms. Right, I understand. Um, the, question, the question I have, are those going to be replacing older um, relocatable? Are they replacements or are they new um, ex- extensions of our schools? Um I believe some are replacements, but they're mostly just to rearrange capacity where uh, we're out of capacity. All right, thank you. Ms. Pesture? I have no question. Mr. Offerman? I have no questions. Mr. Rashid? I have no questions. Ms. Hen? Thank you, Mrs. Posey. Um, Good evening, Mr. Tantliff. Um, Do you have available the number of positions or vacancies that these transfers are by category? Ms. Hen, could you please repeat, do I have vacancies? Uh, could, you, could you repeat the end of your question? Sure. Um, by category, um, do you have the number of positions that are vacant that Included? these yeah. numbers represent where we are this transferring? Is it's, not, it's not enough of them now. Um, you, From sure, where I can. Uh, yes. Let me just make sure I'm looking at all the right activities. Um, activity two, um, mid-level administration. Um, hold on, I just want to make sure I'm looking at the right thing. Um, I believe uh, instructional salaries, we have 170 vacancies. Um, Special education, 43. Mid-level administration was 13. Transportation, 190. Activity 10 operation of plant was 61. Um, let me see if there's any others we needed. Um, health activity 8, uh, just about fully staffed at the moment. I think that was about it. Okay, I'm sorry, I missed um, the number you said for Activity 2, Mid-Level Administration. Uh, 13 vacancies uh, at the moment. 
Okay, thank you. And to clarify, these are positions that we don't anticipate filling prior to the end of this fiscal um, year. Is that correct? Um, HR uh, would need to comment. I believe they're still trying to fill any school-based vacancies, but I might be speaking out of turn. I was giving the current vacancies, which uh, is uh, what we use to base our projections on. Okay, thank you. And do you know if these um, salary, if these reflect salaries for the full year or what percentage of the year? Any idea if these are? What well, we do uh, a full year. We do a full year. I'm sorry. You know, our full year projection is based on year to date actuals. And then mm -hmm. uh, we project the balance of year uh, based on our vacancy at the at the month of projection. So our most recent projection was as of the uh, end of February. We'll be doing the end of March in the next uh, week because uh, it takes okay. a couple of weeks to get all the data after close. So it's a full year uh, expected um, dollars that will be under budget that we use for the transfer. Okay. And do you know if the fiscal year 21 budget includes these positions as being filled that are currently vacant? Um, <clears throat> our, our budget, our, our budget, our budget for, uh, our baseline for next year's budget is always this year's budget. So it's the actual mm -hmm. approved um, positions, whether they're filled or vacant. And then plus or minus any changes at the superintendent and ultimately the. Uh, so. <clears throat> that in addition to we do budget uh, for all positions as if they were filled the county uh, and and we have an, ag an agreement whereby from that fully budgeted number right off the top we reduce it by 25 million dollars so that because we know uh, that there will be a predictable uh, rate of turnover throughout any fiscal year. And for FY21, uh, we have agreed with the county to add another $5 million to that figure up front. So while we are budgeting for all positions individually, in total, we've already uh, taken the prospective savings of $30 million out of that fully budgeted figure. Okay, that's that's very helpful. Thank you, Mr. Saris. So would you say then that this transfer is in line with the anticipated turnover, average yearly turnover yes, then, it, of what you'd expect? Yes, it is, because it's, yes, it's based on yeah. our full year financial projections, which take into account our turnover. Great. Thank you both very much. That's all sure. I had. Thank you, Mrs. Causey. This is Mrs. Causey. Mr. Tantliff, I had a question about the item uh, 01, Administration and Transfer of $700,000 will provide funds required for a new high-capacity document imaging system for human resources and finance. Is uh, that fulfilling the recommendations of the IMERGE report? Uh, this is George uh -huh. Saris. That project is um, being uh, partly uh, managed by myself and by human resources and by business management information systems. So this is a, it's not the records retention uh, program, which I believe you're referring to, but rather this is a component of the system-wide ERP upgrade uh, that was budgeted uh, three years ago at $3.2 million, and this uh, is an enhancement to that uh, upgrade, which 
uh, which will gen allow us to generate uh, electronic images of all uh, requisitions, invoices, and supporting documentation on the finance side as well as on the human resources side to begin to image uh, records of certification and transcripts um, that they require uh, to manage uh, staff uh, development and, and related pay uh, adjustments. Okay, thank you for that explanation. Is there going to be a timeline for this high capacity document imaging system to be used for other offices? Yeah, we will we would uh we have future plans uh at one point to include facilities management. Um they have uh previous to this um, uh, contracted for a, uh, a document imaging system that relates very specifically to uh, architectural and engineering designs and blueprints. And so uh, I don't know if they will still um, want to use this system the same way as we had thought they might but we would still have to come back and find additional funds to do any enhancements over what we've just described here. Okay, thank you very much. And the goal is to increase effectiveness and efficiency uh, in order to perform the work of the school system, um, you know, in, in, a, in a more organized and, and uh, effective fashion, is that correct? Yes, so we've currently had a very um, somewhat limited document imaging program in effect uh, for the past three years since May, uh, well I guess now it's almost four, since May of 2016. And that uh, made it relatively easy for the procurement auditors and, and other audits that have occurred in the last four years to go back and search records. Now, where we've had uh, had to go back six or seven years, that's when we get into paper records that are archived at the warehouse. So, um, by adding to the uh, the ability of this document imaging to uh, extend to other types of documents, particularly human resources, it will make, um, it, it will provide more transparency or ease of access to a lot of records that are now uh, bulky and uh, paper-based. Okay, thank you. And uh, another question I had is, given the county executives uh, budget announcement today and also comments from Governor Hogan and Comptroller Francho about the uh, projections for uh, great reduction in state revenues for the remainder of fiscal year 2020 and also moving into fiscal year 2021. Is it possible that there will be um, additional realignments of the fiscal year 20 funds? Well, I was um on the phone with MSDE this afternoon, and um, we had discussions about that. You know, our revenues uh, are either from the county or the state, and the state indicated at this time that they did not uh, know of or nor were they planning any reductions to the state aid that we currently receive under the Thornton program and the um, the first years of the uh, Blueprint for Maryland slash Kerwin program. Um, and the county, uh, as recently as last week, when we um, met with them to 
load the final numbers in for FY21. They did not, uh, and as they announced today, they did not reduce any of the county's portion uh, for education funding. And so at this point, uh, we're proceeding on the basis that uh, what was uh, what's currently in the plan for FY21 is uh, sustainable. Okay, thank you. Moving on to Ms. Joes. Thank you. Uh, just one quick question. Your instructional textbooks and supplies category four, uh, you talked about a reduction in instructional textbooks. Does that instructional textbook only include paper textbooks? And um, do the supplies include Chromebooks or other devices that we probably have an uptick in demand right now because of COVID-19. Um, in, in instructional textbooks, we actually put money in so that we could <clears throat> cover a chunk of the critical textbooks that we need in FY21, but we're not funded in the CE's budget that was announced today. Okay, uh, and another quick question. Um, could you explain what provide for out-of-county living arrangements um, means? Sure. There are some students who are tied to Baltimore County as their home jurisdiction, but for uh, a variety uh, of different reasons, they may be attending school in another county, um, but they're still officially tied to Baltimore County, so we end up getting build tuition for those students as we bill other jurisdictions uh, that are going in the opposite direction. Okay, thank you so much. Sure. Mr. McMillian? No question. Ms. Mack? Yes, um, thank you, Ms. Causey. Mr. Tantliff, I have um, a few questions. One, the first one piggybacks on what Ms. Joes was referencing. Um, in the FY21 budget, we have $16 million in instructional textbooks and supplies for academic areas like Spanish, French, world languages, social studies, science, math, and ELA. Um, I think you may have just answered this, but I'm going to ask it to make sure. Um, for what specifically is the requested $3.7 million going to be used? Sure. Um, the $3.7 million is actually not the full amount that we're hoping to spend on textbooks, um, but the superintendent prioritized open court for grades 2 and 3, which are $2.1 million, and Bridges Math most likely. Um, and th there may be more, more current information, but I believe for grades 3 to 5, which would be $2.6 million. So we had other savings within the activity that will go um, towards um, paying for that total of $4.7 million. And then as we get closer to the end of the year, depending on how our uh, spending is panned out, pans out, we'll hopefully have enough uh, availability to spend that last half million dollars. But none of the textbooks that were in the budget were approved by the, in the county executive's budget. That's why oh, we're trying to squeeze okay, some out. Okay, thank you. All no, right, I, I wasn't no. aware of that. And then on Category 5, which is other instructional cost, um, the comment on page 2 says that um, we'll provide funds required for principals to support school budgets, $1,050,000, school photocopies and printing, $1.4 million. Um, are, are these monies going to be used to decentralize photocopying and printing? It's my understanding, probably in the 2015 time frame, a lot of that photocopying and printing was centralized um, and taken out of the schools. Are we going back to school-based printing and photocopying? Um, well, well, the schools do their own uh, printing, but it's paid for centrally. Um, but in that uh, activity five, that is actually on a fairly flat uh, and slightly declining run rate. But 
um, just not able to be contained within that um, budget for photocopy and printing. So there's no change to how we've been handling that um, over the past few years, although there there is a change in terms of um, management of it, which we're uh, bringing back into the procurement department versus using outside vendors um, going and so forward. So that's all going to remain the same. But this is all this year. So this is just for this year, there was not a change. It's just to get the budget aligned to expenditures. Okay, and then I just have a general concern about the decreases. Um, so the decreases are coming out of student personnel services, health services. Um, I think those are the two I'm most worried about. Um, I know in Dr. Williams' proposed budget, he had um, you know, addressed the needs of our students by um, having uh, health, increased health services, five health assistants, two float nurse, 1.6 um, FTE nurse, and then um, school counselors, um, social workers, that type of thing. Is there any concern with taking money out of these um, categories and moving it over in still providing schools with the resources that they need in the upcoming um, FY21 year? Sure. Well, again, this is just FY20. This doesn't have any impact on FY21. We are not um, – HR tries to fill every single position throughout the year that they can. This money is available strictly due to vacancies and turnover that occurred throughout the year. So we're not making any changes to hiring policies to create these dollars. We're not uh, – we're not – consciously not spending certain dollars other than of course with schools being closed and and orders are are uh, slowed to stop right now but aside from that um, the money is just available due to natural turnover that uh, before hr can fill the positions okay thank you very much you've answered my questions and allayed my concerns thank you miss scott yes thank you um you said it earlier, and I was looking for it, but you said half a million dollars um, for bottled water. Is that um, basically geared towards the schools um, that don't have uh, the drinking water at the water fountains now, or could you just break down what what that is? Sure. I believe uh, just about every school has bottled water now. Um, and I think a few months ago we had a pretty in-depth conversation on that, but it's been for several years that we've been putting bottled water in the majority of schools. And so that's been a recurring cost, but the county's not given us a specific budget for it. So we've um, just absorbed it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, just and the quality of drinking water and the, you know, being super cautious. Okay. Yeah, that was what I, because I, I did remember we spoke about it, but it was in, in connection to um, lead and um, uh, drinking water that are schools that had um, higher levels of, of lead. And I think that's where I, I remember the half a million in, um, for bottled water. And I was also looking here, and um, this has been um, brought up and addressed by um, Ms. Joes and as, as well as Ms. Mack, um, but Anything, considering that we're going now, it looks like for quite a while, um, digital learning, is there anything in here that reallocates money to support either hardware or software or the digital virtual learning that's um, being taken place now by all of our students? Um, uh, I believe right now all the costs that we've recognized and there's been costs for um, postage to get devices out to all the elementary kids and to print um, lesson plans that we mail to all the elementary kids. Um, that amount of that incremental cost so far uh, has been absorbed uh, within our overall budget. There could mm -hmm. be unanticipated costs that come up and we will have to address them as they do arise, but there's nothing right now that's caused us to have to make a, a significant change in the budget to um, be able to cover those things. Okay. 
Great. Okay, so it's kind of we'll watch it and observe as it goes along. All right. Thank you very much. Yes. Yeah, yes. Thank you. Ms. Rowe? Hi. Can you tell me of this bat transfer? This is a rather large bat transfer for an annual um, bat transfer. And I was just wondering what things in this bat transfer are specifically being transferred because we either have additional COVID-19 related spending and COVID-19 money that we're not spending. Well, the, the only thing really specific, uh, Ms. Rowe, at the moment was um, we had to absorb about $2 million in overtime during the initial two-week complete closure to, to sanitize and clean all the schools. Uh, there was also a small amount uh, for drivers who volunteered to do the buses, but it was mainly the custodians in the school. And then uh, due to some of the savings that we had, over April, it freed up enough money to um, cover the the um, textbook purchase that we're intending to do in Activity Four. Now, there's a lot of unknowns, and uh, bills get delayed as they come in. But as we get, if the um, state does decide to close in May, there will likely be net additional savings, but we'll need to wait and see how that all shakes out once we get there. Uh, Ms. Rowe, this is George Saris, and I just wanted to add that uh, in the decreases uh, in Activity 9, uh, a, a significant portion of that $1.5 million uh, became available because we, uh, for a period of six weeks, we are not paying the bus contractors their full typical service uh, invoices to us because they're not operating. Um, we worked out an arrangement to, uh, to support those contract bus companies uh, with uh, funds uh, in lieu of services. Okay, thank you. Board members, is there any additional discussion? Ms. Call of you, I'd like to ask Mr. Sarah something more specific about the the outside contractors, bus companies? Yes. So I understand that they, their contract is written such that they only get paid for the work that they do. Correct, Mr. Saris? Correct, sir. So because they weren't working, they weren't being paid, correct? Correct. So in cooperation between transportation and central staff and they went back and made an arrangement with the outside contractors to give them some sort of money to help them make it through this process. Is that correct? That's correct. It equates to maybe about 50% of what they otherwise would normally have billed us. And I'm just, and future contracts, will that be, you know, it, it surprised me a little bit that they were not, everything's geared on 180 days or 190 days, however many school days there are in a school year. But in that contract, it's not, it wasn't currently written like that, was it? Correct. So in the future, do you think that that's something that's going to be incorporated in future contracts, the fact that they're paid a specific number of days, regardless if, if we get involved in a, in a pandemic like this or something, a crisis like this again? I think it's something that we will consider in the next contract, um, which goes through 2021. And it, this, so the, the contract we're under dates back to 2016 when we had far fewer contracted routes than we now do. 
And now that contractors represent a, a more significant portion of our service model, uh, I think we will have to consider changing that. Thank you. Board members, is there any additional discussion before we I call for a motion? Do I have a motion to approve the fiscal year 2020 budget appropriation transfer as presented in Exhibit L? So moved, Opperman. Do I have a second? Second, Makita. Last chance for discussion. Okay, may I have a roll call vote, please? Mr. Kuhn? Yes. Ms. Pasture? Yes. Mr. Offerman? Yes. Ms. Hen? Yes. Ms. Causey? Yes. Ms. Jost? Yes. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Ms. Mack? Yes. Ms. Scott? Yes. Ms. Rouse? Yes. Thank you. The motion carries. The next item on the agenda is item M, new business changes to the 2019-2020 school year uh, calendar, and for that we call on Dr. Williams. So good evening again, board members. I'm coming to you uh, <clears throat> asking the board to ratify the changes to the current school calendar as we know of right now. Um, <clears throat> We're asking that the calendar reflect the following revisions. March 30th was the continuity of learning training for teachers, where teachers worked remotely. April 6th, the continuity of learning for students, uh, teachers on duty remotely, that we uh, identify April 10th and April 13th as a state mandated holiday um, or spring break on those three day, two days, sorry, stand corrected. And June 2nd right now, Maryland presidential primary elections. So I bring to you these revisions, knowing that we'll be coming to the board probably in May for additional uh, changes to the calendar as I am working with the state superintendent uh, to look at the calendar days for our students and staff. Thank you, Dr. Williams. Do I have a motion to ratify the changes to the 2019-2020 school calendar as presented, presented in Exhibit K? So moved, so Lily. Could you repeat that again? I said so uh, moved, Lisa Mack. Back in row. Thank you. Board members, are there any questions or discussion? This is Russ Q, and I have one question. Um, yes. Dr. Williams, was the, the third marking period, did that originally end on April 9th, or was that a different date originally. The third marking period originally ended on April 9th. All right, thank you. No further questions for me. If any other board members have uh, questions or comments, just state your name and go ahead, please. No. Hearing no other discussion, I did just want to uh, let board members and the um, public know that Dr. Williams had a discussion with board officers and uh, indicating the changes that he wanted to make to the calendar. Given the emergent nature of 
uh, the COVID-19 mandates. There was very little time to, uh, to make those decisions. And so with discussion with the board officers and then with advice of board counsel, we utilize policy 8131 in order for the superintendent to, to make those decisions in a timely fashion. And that is the uh, internal board policy related to organization and administration in policy absence. So we just need to be mindful that, as Dr. Williams said, there may be additional changes that need to be made and we are all just working together to uh, do the best that we can to support the continuity of education and our staff. So with no other uh, conversation or discussion, can I have a roll call vote, please? Mr. Kim? Yes. Ms. Pasteur? Yes. Oh, excuse me, yes. Mr. Offerman? Yes. Mr. Rashid? Yes. Ms. Hen? Yes. Ms. Clausey? Yes. Ms. Jost? Yes. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Ms. Mack? Yes. Ms. Scott? I'm sorry, I was just connected. I, I just Scott? came back on you. Can you hear me? Yes, we're, we're voting on the motion to, to ratify the changes to the 1920 school calendar. Oh, okay, yes. Thank you. Ms. Rowe? Yes. Thank you. The motion carries. Thank you, Dr. Williams. The next item on the agenda is item N, new business, financial disclosure statements, deadline extension, and Dr. Williams will present that as well. Ms. Cosby, this is Andy Nussbaum. I think I, I'm prepared to do that if you'd like. Yes, that will be great. Okay. So, um, as you know, the, the uh, um, board policy requires that financial disclosure statements for the previous year uh, be filed on or before April 30th. Uh, which is obviously coming up pretty quickly. The ethics review panel has had some discussions over the last week, or last weeks, I should say, uh, with regard to that deadline and the fact that, that uh, uh, board employees obviously are not at their workplace, they're at home, uh, they may or may not have access to printers, uh, and, and they may or may not have access to the records that they need to complete the financial disclosure statements. So the, the ethics review panel uh, is recommending that the board uh, uh, extend the deadline that's contained in your policy for the filing of the financial disclosure statements and that the deadline be extended for si until 60 days after schools and offices reopen. Uh, I will also indicate to you that I've had uh, an email exchange with the State Ethics Commission and was advised that the Executive Director of the Commission has given support uh, for local uh, local and governmental entities making decisions uh, to extend the deadline due to the COVID-19 issues. So the ethics review panel is recommending that the board uh, extend the April 30th deadline until 60 days after schools and offices reopen. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Newsbaum. Do I have a motion to approve a deadline extension for financial disclosure statements as outlined in board policy 8364 from April 30th until 60 days from the date schools and offices are reopened for staff. So moved, Ro. Do I have a second? Second. No. Thank you. Any additional discussion? May I have a roll call vote, please? Could you tell me who's second? I'm sorry, this is Makita Scott. I'm, oh, I apologize. Am I speaking over someone? Okay, so I just wanted to be clear. So this would be for, just so I understand, as Andy said, this would be for all staff as well as board members, everyone. It would be 60 days from the date schools and offices are set to reopen. Is, is, do I have that correct? That, that would be the recommendation, yes. The recommendation. Okay, great. I just wanted to reiterate that just so I understood. Thank you. It would be for everybody who's required. Obviously not every employee in the school system is required to file, but this would be for every employee who is, requ who is required to file a financial disclosure statement. 
Okay. Got it. 60 days from the date, schools and offices reopen for staff. So would we then do, I guess, sort of, I guess the, the ethics, um, they would send out an email letting, I guess, staff and everyone know when that date is. Um, that's my question is as far as the communication to let people know when that is and then when it would be required. Yes, well, I mean that hasn't that wasn't discussed, but we can figure the the panel working with the school administration can figure out some way to advise, um, buddy, that that date has been extended. Okay, great, thank you. Thank you for that clarification, Ms. Scott and Mr. Newsbaum. Is there any other discussion? May I have a roll call vote, please, Mrs. Gover? Uh, may I find out who, who seconded that motion, please? Um, I said second, but I think someone else did also. I don't know if they said I it before. I did as well. Mm -hmm. This Ms. Pastu, I did too, but we Ms. Scott and I both said it at the same time. Okay. okay. Mr. Kuhn? Yes. Ms. Pasture? Yes. Mr. Offerman? Yes. Mr. Rashid? Yes. Ms. Hen? Yes. Ms. Causey? Yes. Ms. Jost? Yes. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Ms. Mack? Yes. Ms. Scott? Yes. Ms. Rowe? Yes. Thank you. The motion carries. Thank you. Our next item is item O, new business, contract awards, and for that we call on Building and Contracts Committee Chair, Ms. Hen. Thank you, Ms. Causey. Members of the board, the board's building and contracts committee met earlier this evening. Items 01 through 013 are being forwarded to the full board for approval. Do I have a motion to approve items 0 1 through 0 13? So moved, Rowe. Thank you, Ms. Rowe. No second is needed since the recommendation comes from the committee. Is there any discussion? Um, I would yes. like to say that I abstain from, um, it looks like it is um, the uh, six wireless services. And that is Ms. Scott? Correct, yes. Thank you. Is there Hi, any Mrs. other discussion? Rusty. I have two I have two items I'd like to discuss. The first one will be number four and the second one will be number six. Go right ahead. Okay, great. So the um, we'll start with the information technology hardware contract. Um, and this is a very wide ranging contract that gives a tremendous amount of spending. Um, and I just want to be very clear as to what we're focused on. It looks as if a good portion of this money is being focused on um, outfitting schools, new schools, and I guess retrofitting old schools with um, various types of technology. Is that correct? Mr. Kuhn, yeah, this. Oh, George, is that you, Jim? Yes. So, Mr. Kuhn, that's absolutely correct. Um, uh, this, this money is uh, uh, primarily in support of our network support services team, uh, which uh, utilizes this contract for um, new school construction to uh, put in place the uh, network required in the school, uh, wireless devices, our, um, our Cisco infrastructure, um, our filtering systems. Okay, great. Thank you. So um, one of the bullet points here on, I believe, the second page, it talks about wireless network replacement, and this is requested funding for 21 budget. Um, and it talks about potential reimbursement in FY 2022. Can you explain that to me, please? 
Uh, yes, sir. That's part of the E-rate program through the federal government. So um, when we procure certain categories of network equipment, we are able to submit those uh, to the, fe the federal government through the FCC and an organization called USAC in order to um, uh, request that we be reimbursed based on our uh, free and reduced lunch count. Um, so our, um, our school system is able to receive back uh, reimbursements uh, through the E-rate program uh, as long as we are uh, follow uh, certain guidelines when it comes to the procurement process. And so these wireless upgrades uh, have followed that process through. Okay, great. And then there's another line item down um, that talks about, about it's 6.6 6 million for 67 schools, roughly 99 million per school. So it talks about network and VoIP upgrades. Um, the network is not the wireless network that we're talking about in the previous, um, what we were just talking about, correct? No, sir, that's the wired network. As we go and upgrade our schools from their current digital phone system over to a voice over IP phone system, uh, we are also replacing um, the aging switches uh, to uh, the newer Cisco models that support our VoIP system uh, more thoroughly. All right, thank you very much. This is Molly. Um, I have a question. Yes, go Mr. right ahead. Corn. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Korn, it looks like a lot of this contract is just upgrading the network infrastructure. Um, does that include switching more to online services? Does that include storage, online cloud-based services? And um, does that also include Chromebooks? So, Mr. So, Mr. This, this contract, um, does not include our cloud storage. That is uh, encapsulated underneath of our um, Microsoft Meek agreement, which is their software agreement. Um, with our Microsoft agreement with, that we pay annually, it comes with uh, more than enough cloud storage for students and staff to utilize. Um, in our schools where we are moving to Chromebooks, we are decreasing the size of storage in our servers that are on site. Um, while each school still requires uh, a server to provide um, certain network functionality, uh, we are uh, dramatically decreasing the amount of storage that we're supporting in each building. Um, so th this contract does not cover our uh, Chromebook purchases, um, that's held under another contract as well. Okay, thank you. Hi, this is um, Makita Scott. Um, so I was just curious, based on what Ms. Jost just said, I know that we have the Chromebook, and but previously we had, I believe it was the HP devices, and I guess I'm just sort of trying to understand or maybe I don't understand the difference in the cost between the two. Um, are the Chromebooks less expensive than the HP devices that we originally had? Because I know that that we previously had those when we had a one-to-one -one ratio. Um, so our, our Chromebooks are significantly less expensive than our, uh, our PCs. Uh, this contract, though, is, is not the contract that we procure any of our devices through. It's not. Okay. No, ma'am. So with that contract, though, considering everything that has happened, um, now I'm wondering is that – so I thought that was through this. I'm wondering now if that's going to be a higher cost. Ms. Scott, I'm, I'm not sure that I've, uh, can you give me a little more on that one so that I can answer your question? Certainly, I apologize. Um, I guess I'm just looking as far as as we ramp up with everything as far as now we're doing digital and online learning. Um, I'm just wondering, um, because I saw in here where it says lease agreements will be presented separately to the board for approval, what lease agreements, if any, do we already have in place? Are they being renewed? Um, I guess that's more so I, what my question is. So, Mr. Guy, th this uh, this contract um, in its uh, uh, in its writing is um, a, a uh, cooperative contract with um, uh, the, uh, 
the Maryland uh, buying uh, consortium, which is called Meek. And we have traditionally, uh, I, I want to say uh, three years ago, entered into a six-year contract uh, to um, lease Cisco equipment. So our switches for uh, the schools that we have in place. And so those kinds of agreements we would bring back to the board when it came to if we needed to, to lease network equipment again. Okay. Okay, great. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Other board members? Hi, this is Russ. I'd like to talk about the wireless services pretty quickly. Go right ahead. Thank you. <clears throat> so I was just curious as to the amount of um, coverage we're getting. For instance, we're spending – previous contract was $100,000. we are adding 340000 to it. So my question is um, – what exactly, like how many mobile devices in essence are we spending this money on? Uh, this is George Saris, and um, we current the biggest two portions of this uh, contract cover uh, our school buses, each of which. Um, have a mobile phone, a cell phone uh, in the bus for the driver in event of emergency, uh, as well as um, our, um, our about, I want to say about a hundred of our facilities maintenance staff who work out in the field. Um, and uh, I want to say about um, the same number of information technology staff who's, who travel throughout the system to support uh, the technology in schools. And so the, um, the, this contract uh, was based on maintaining all of those users, however, um, the contract that was also uh, presented this evening for the uh, the land mobile radio system will allow us to rep to discontinue those 900 approximately cell phones that are currently in school buses. They would be replaced uh, with that two-way radio capabilities. So. Given that that project will take time to implement and build out, we have just wanted to continue this contract to cover everything that's in place uh, for the time being, although we project it to decline. Okay, thank you. And just so I'm clear, regarding the um, the bus um, radios, is that – is that scheduled to be completed by the end of this um, calendar year? Uh, Jim, do you want to comment on that at all? Um, George, I, Mr. Kuhn, you faded out just at the end. When, when were you talking about completion? I, my question was just about the, um, the bus radios that were just discussed as to when yes. and how quickly that would be executed. So we're we're projecting um, to if if work can start and as Ms. Rowe brought up, as long as the FCC is uh, cooperating with us, um, uh, we're we're hoping to have the vast majority of this done. Um, uh, hopefully next school year by December timeframe, um, but that's a that's a target date that I don't want to uh, give a, a false sense. If something comes up, it's it's a lot of moving parts in it. Uh, but it is a um, a it's our highest priority when it comes to uh, our cooperation with trans the transportation department to um, bring the the buses into the 21st century with with uh, two-way radio capabilities. All right, thank you, yes, sir. 
Any other board members with questions? Hearing none, may I have a roll call vote? Excuse me, Ms. Palsy. We need yes. to separate the contracts out so that we had one abstention. Yes. Vote on those. Um, Which number motions. needs to be separated, please? Six needs to be restate separated so that Ms. Scott may abstain on the record. Thank you. So. Can we uh, have a roll call vote to approve items 01 through 05 and 07 through 013, please? Mr. Kuhn? Yes. Ms. Fester? Yes. Mr. Offerman? Yes. Mr. Rishi? Yes. Ms. Hen? Yes. Kazi? Yes. yes. Ms. Jones? Yes. yes. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Ms. Max? Yes. Scott? Yes. Ms. Rao? Yes. Thank you. That motion carries. Now may I have a roll call vote on item 06. Mr. Kuhn? Yes. Fast chair? Yes. Mr. Offerman? Yes. Mr. Rishi? Yes. Ms. Hen? Yes. Ms. Crosby? Yes. Ms. Jost? Yes. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Ms. Mack? Yes. Ms. Scott? Abstain. Ms. Rowe? Yes. Thank you. And the motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Mr. Saris and Mr. Korn and uh, Dr. Scriven. The next item is item P, unfinished business board policies. As the committee chair, I would ask members of the board to accept this report of the policy review committee and the recommendation to amend the following board policies. Policy 5540, alcoholic beverages, controlled substances, inhalants, and prescription and non-prescription drugs. Policy 5551, gangs, gang activity, and similar destructive or illegal group behavior. Policy 5580, bullying, cyberbullying, harassment, or intimidation. These recommendations are presented to you on tonight's agenda as Exhibit P. Do I have a motion to adopt the recommendations of the board's policy review committee? So moved, Roe. Thank you, Ms. Rowe. No second is needed since the recommendation comes from the committee. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, Mrs. Gover, may I have a roll call vote, please? Mr. Kuhn? Yes. Ms. Fester? Yes. Mr. Offerman? Yes. Mr. Rishi? Yes. Ms. Hen? Yes. Ms. Plazzi? Yes. Ms. Jost? Yes. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Ms. Mack? Yes. Ms. Scott? Yes. Ms. Ruff? Yes. Thank you. The motion carries. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is item Q. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Um, yes. Ms. Cossey, this is Makita Scott. Yes. Um, yes, I just wanted to bring up as we're looking at policy, we are currently um, out of policy or out of compliance with our educational equity policy 101. It um, went into effect with a policy change uh, October of 2019. So we need to update our policy. Ours is has not been updated. Our policy um, 0100, uh, our equity policy, has not been updated since 2016. So I wanted to bring that to the board's attention. Thank you, Ms. Scott. At this time, we could uh, make a motion to have the Policy Review Committee um, ask staff to add that to uh, not the next policy review committee meeting because we already have a full agenda set for that, 
but at the um, at the next meeting of the policy review committee. So I'd be happy to make that motion. Oh, great. I'd be happy to second. Board members, is there any discussion? Yes, I just have a quick question. If we are out of compliance, shouldn't that take precedence and it should be added to the next policy committee uh, meeting and rearrange well, it? Thank you, Ms. Jones. This is Scott. Oh, I'm, I apologize. I'm sorry. That's okay. Thank you, Ms. Jones, for your um, comments. Our next policy review committee meeting is tomorrow, so it would really be um, – impossible for staff to uh, add that um, with any, uh, you know, real effective uh, analysis. So that's why my motion was to add it to, to the May meeting. Okay. And is there I'm any sorry, other this is Makita, This is Makita Scott. I'm actually working on um, something and I can work with staff and present it um, at the next meeting, not this meeting, but the next one after that. Thank you for that clarification. Are there additional board member comments? Okay, Mrs. Gover, may we have a roll call vote? Mr. Kahn? Yes. Ms. Pasture? Yes. Mr. Offerman? Yes. Mr. Rashid? Yes. Ms. Ken? Yes. Ms. Pazzi? Yes. Ms. Jost? Yes. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Ms. Mack? Yes. Ms. Scott? Yes. Ms. Rowe? Yes. Thank you. The motion carries. The next item on the agenda is item Q board member comments, and for that we will uh, go around our virtual dais, starting with Mr. Kuhn. Thank you. So we are in unprecedented times, and I believe we are all uh, trying to deal with that as best we can. Um, so I would like to thank uh, the staff uh, and uh, Dr. Williams for working hard uh, to try and um, come up with the best plan that you currently can. Um, as a father of five, uh, I'm getting a chance to enjoy my four teenagers and my second grader. Um, and significant amount of time we get to spend together every day. Um, and I would just try to um, relay that, you know, although we are all, situations <clears throat> and there are many many challenges we're all facing that if we can take the time to um, uh, to really just focus on each other uh, especially when <clears throat> uh, as families we are separated from many many other people uh, and realize that um, those relationships are important and schools important not just for uh, the academics and education that the children all receive, but for the social interactions and the friends and the bonds that they make with other people. So as we're trying to work through all of this, um, please take time <clears throat> to allow uh, for your children to interact with their friends however they can, uh, hopefully at a distance, uh, to, to follow the governor's orders. Um, uh, but make sure that those connections don't wither uh, during this time. Um, uh, thank you all. Ms. Pasteur. I want to first uh, ditto what Mr. Kuhn just said. I want to um, ask that everyone remain safe and healthy and uh, that we keep in our hearts and our prayers those who are positive for uh, the virus and those who have passed. I want to welcome uh, Joshua as well as Dr. Hager. And uh, Ms. Causey, uh, I'm sure you see a natural place in committee for her. 
um, with her background in nutrition. Uh, so that leads me to uh, the topic that I want to just bring out very quickly, as Dr. Williams uh, pointed out uh, Monday, I believe it was, uh, I sat in on the, um, the teleconference with Senator through May Maryland Association of Board of Education, education uh, Boards of Education, um, with Senators Cardin and Van Hollen, and everyone will be happy to know that the questions that came up covered special education, covered equity. Uh, covered uh, instructional issues. The thing that most of the people talked about, however, was uh, computers, how to get um, more money for the other systems. We're in good shape, but for the other systems to be able to buy laptops for their students and for some of our counties just to get what is needed so that they can um, make connections once they get those laptops. But my question had to do with those that we find are food insecure, because once our children get all of those things and are trying to do their work, we have to remember that if they are hungry, none of it is going to happen, and it doesn't matter whether they have the uh, technology uh, or the, what it is that we're giving them if they're hungry. And we're seeing and we know that with this virus and people being laid off and losing their jobs, the number of people who are food insecure has grossly multiplied. So uh, both senators acknowledge that, and we talked a bit about um, the CARES Act. Everyone knows about the CARES Act because they start thinking those checks. But a big piece of the CARES Act has to do with feeding our children and their families. So I just very quickly want to just give you some background to let you know SNAP has been doubled. Those students who were already uh, getting food through SNAP will continue along with those who are new because of the virus. And the process for getting uh, that support will be um, a lot easier. Um, also, um, special child nutrition programs and programs for food banks and community food distribution have been also increased. I'm going to jump through some of this to go to something that is critical. In fact, I have a letter from six of our delegates and seven of our senators to the state superintendent to make sure that as a state we apply for P-EBT, which is Pandemic Electronic Benefits Transfer, because there's a discrepancy. It looks on one hand like we haven't applied as a state um, but on another level, it looks like maybe we have. So our state legislators are asking um, uh, the, our state board of education to call on them to help move uh, this forward because if we get this federal money, that means that every child um, who qualifies will get an extra $115 a month uh, for food giving um, the state an extra $44 million in federal resources. Uh, what CARES does as well is gives each school system a little bit more flexibility in terms of how to use the money that it will garner so that we can make sure that the meals we are serving them are at the highest level in terms of nutritional value because we're – feeding now children um, for three meals a day. And we know that many of our children depend on coming to school not just for the learning, but because they are food insecure on many levels. And so this, these funds are important. So please um, help our state support uh, applying 
for um, PEBT so that we can get those extra funds. And I want to do um, or congratulate or to thank the uh, student support team because they are out a couple of three days a week uh, giving food. And I want just to put out there that they give out food um, the next time will be Thursday and then Friday at Owings Mills High School and Parkville High School. And it doesn't matter where you live in Baltimore County. You may go, if you're on the east side, go to Parkville. If you're on the west side, go to Owings Mills High School. Know that the last distribution they ran on this side of the county, on the west side of the county, they ran out of food. And we give um, um, parents who come food gift cards, and we ran out of everything and thought that there was an abundance. Uh, Vicki Allman, who had been our, one of our council persons, pointed out that uh, within one hour, it was gone. It was all gone. So anyone who's listening in, if you're able to make donations of food and products to, to support um, families in this regard, Please reach out if you know uh, Lori Taylor Mitchell. Reach out to her. Reach out to Vicki Allman. You may reach out to me, and I will see that they get that information. But one of the primary ways we must support our children and our families so that when they get our packets, when they get those Chromebooks, that they will be able to learn because they will be well-fed. And this will go on for as long as this pandemic exists and maybe beyond. So please keep this in mind and um, support our young people and their families by making sure that no child goes to bed hungry. And uh, Dr. Hager, uh, I'm sure Ms. Causey is listening. Um, you are natural. I started this way, and I'm going to end this way. You will be a natural on this board. So thank you, and everyone stay safe and healthy. Thank you, Ms. Pasture. Mr. Offerman? Yes, I'd like to uh, thank the partnership between uh, staff members, particularly school-based teachers, and, uh, and the parents as they try to carry uh, on the uh, educational process is very, very uh, difficult time. And I uh, uh, kudos to all those folks who are involved, and uh, you know, we need to do the best, do the, the best job that we can do, but we cannot do it without parent support. That's all. Thanks. Thank you. Mr. Rashid? No comment. Thank you. Ms. Hen? Thank you. So by now we all know what we should be doing to protect ourselves and to protect others from the physical dangers of the coronavirus. And please keep doing those things. Wash your hands, stay home. If you have to go out, wear a mask. But it's equally important to know the dangers of this virus and of isolation on our own mental health and of, on those we love. Just because we are socially distanced does not mean we cannot be socially connected. We need each other now more than ever. So please stay connected. Find someone to stay connected with, whether it be a family member, a teacher, a friend, a loved one. Look out for yourself. Look out for another. Be patient with yourselves and be patient with one another. Take care and we will get through this together. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hen. And I gave my comments earlier. Ms. Jones? Thank you. Um, just quickly, thanks to all of Baltimore County staff and the Office of Food and Nutrition Services for continuing to feed our children. Uh, thank you, Ms. Pasture, for giving us an update on that. And congratulations to our new student member of the board and our new board member, Dr. Hagen. Uh, stay safe and enjoy your time with your loved ones. Good night. Thank you, Ms. Jones. Mr. McMillian? 
Yes, I'm really excited about the remote learning. I think it's going to change the face of public education. It has that potential. However, I'm concerned about the at-risk family and children, the, the people that are living on the edge financially, that whose homes are questionable, uh, their living arrangements. I'm concerned that these people are going to be even further alienated from our system because they can't walk into a school building and actually sit down and talk to somebody about their situation. So we've got to be aware there's going to be people fall through the cracks, and we've got to somehow catch those people and get them in, back involved in our school system. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McMillian. Ms. Mack? Yes, um, I would like to uh, thank Dr. Williams and his staff um, and everyone who is working to feed our children and educate our children, care for our sick, stock our stores, and deliver our packages and mail. Um, I also want to thank, um, I was fortunate right up to the Friday when the announcement of school closures happened to have visited 21 of 26 District 1 schools. And I want to thank the teachers, principals, students, and BCPS personnel, Dr. Raquel Jones, Dr. Miriam Yarborough, and Executive Director Karen Blannard for making my visit so worthwhile. Um, as other board members have said, we are going to get through this, and we are going to be seeing each other in schools um, just as soon as it's safe to do so. Be safe and um, take care of each other. Thank you, Ms. Mack. Ms. Scott? Yes, thank you for that. Um, I just would like to thank the entire BCPS team, um, the administration, teachers, school personnel, staff, everyone for all of their dedication. Um, the, uh, as was mentioned earlier, overtime, work, long hours, everything that was done to make sure that our children um, are learning and to support our families. I'd like to thank as well as the parents and students for their patience as we move through this crisis. Um, I'd like to thank Dr. Williams for um, his leadership as, as we move through this unchartered uh, territory. And I cannot say thank you enough because I understand um, uh, what, what a lot went into and everything that we're all going through. Um, I am glad that we have a digital structure in place to support our students that consists of both hardware and software. And what I believe is that as a community, as Team BCF, BCPS, it's our strength that will unite us and will help us move forward and support each other. Uh, and as a board, we're committed to supporting our students, our teachers, <clears throat> and our families as we navigate this new reality, which, although it separates us, it also unites us in so many ways. So I just um, am thankful for the work that all of you do each and every day. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Scott. Ms. Rowe? Hi, I just want to point out that this is a very stressful time for everyone. Everyone is doing the best they can to deal with the situation in the best way they can under unprecedented circumstances for our generation and the people that are currently living today. And so um, one of the ways that our students have come up with to do this is two of our uh, high school, uh, Delaney High School students have started a group on Facebook called Baltimore County Mass Makers. And BCPS wrote uh, an excellent article on this. And I just wanted to tell people, you can find that article on my Facebook page, but if you can sew or you have fabric to donate, these two students, um, Benet Kosla and um, Alicia, what's her name? Alicia Murray. They they have done this, and it is so organized. They reach out to the volunteers. They're organizing all these volunteers all over the county to make these masks for hospital workers and uh, people who really need them in order to stay safe, that our medical community is not able to supply masks. So 
the the organization of these two students is just amazing and there's an excellent article that bcps wrote about them and i would like for people to remember as dialogues about the economy the suffering the illness as people talk about these things remember that the enemy is the virus it is not each other and some people aren't suffering as much as others and others are suffering a great deal. And I think that if we all work together as a community, we can help each other. And the people that have something they can give can give so that the people who are suffering will not suffer as much. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Rowan, board members. Our next item on the agenda is item R, which is information. And on the board docs, there is information which is a financial report for the months ending of February 2019 and 2020. And the final item on the agenda for tonight's meeting is item S, announcements. And the announcement is that the next board meeting, which will be virtual, will be Tuesday, May 5th, 2020. And with that, I just want to say thanks to everyone for their flexibility, creativity, compassion, patience, and willingness to do their part, as well as go above and beyond to serve others, and also to be a part of the solution to the COVID crisis. So God bless and good night. Thank you.